In the past, healthcare providers in the community were called governmental public health nurses in Okinawa. Governmental public health nurses were stationed at all municipalities, including remote islands and areas in Okinawa after World War II. They provided health care and nursing to the people in the community. People were affectionately calling the governmental public health nurses who took care of their health, Kokan-san. One of the persons who trained those governmental public health nurses is Ms. Taiko Kinjo. She said that governmental public health nurses were practicing primary health care from the 1950s. Our duty was a nursing activity to protect the lives of the people in the community. Public means people. Health means to protect lives. Public health, therefore the title means primary health care. The system of public health nurse was highly recognized by the people. Now, what kind of activity of public health nurse received support from the people? We will follow the tracks of the public health nursing stationing system that lasted 45 years in Okinawa. The history of public health nurses can be divided into three periods. The first period began in 1950, when the training of governmental public health nurses started, until 1972, when Okinawa reverted to Japan. The second period began in 1972 until 1977 when the prefectural public health nurse system continued in its place. In accordance with the revision to Japan, the title was changed from governmental public health nurse to prefectural public health nurse. The third period began in 1997 when the municipal public health nurse system was entirely put into practice. Today there is a clear distinction between the role of municipal public health nurses and that of prefectural public health nurses. First, we're going to take a look at the first period. How did the governmental public health nurse come into existence? The U.S. force which occupied Okinawa after the war inaugurated the United States Civil Administration of the Ryukyu Islands and implemented various measures in order to improve the situation of Okinawa to the level before the war with the government of the Ryukyu Islands under control. At that time, the sanitary environment was poor and diseases such as contagious diarrhea, enteritis, and tuberculosis were widespread. Improvement of the public health was the issue that had to be tackled without delay. Then, in 1951, public health centers were established in mainland Okinawa, and each center started to take measures against the major problems seen in each community. When establishing a public health center, personnel who could take charge in public health nursing activity were necessary. Those public health center personnel were governmental public health nurses who were engaged in public health nursing activities. After the war, the number of doctors in Okinawa had decreased to a third. It takes a long time to train doctors. Under these circumstances, governmental public health nurses were trained to serve all the people in remote islands and areas providing health care firsthand. What made governmental public health nurses in those days different from general nurses and public health nurses is that they were allowed to perform medical acts when necessary, though it was limited. The training of the governmental public health nurses was carried out prior to the establishment of public health centers. In January 1950, 
Ms. Juanita J. Waterworth, a nursing counselor, came to the Public Health Department of the United States Civil Administration of the Ryukyu Islands. In October, Ms. Josephine H. Kayser, a public health nurse education counselor, came to the Public Health Department from the General Headquarters of the Allied Powers. These two women initiated a course to train governmental public health nurses. Women who had a nurse's license participated. Participants had applied for the course through the recommendation of head nurses of municipal hospitals and clinics. They came from all over the community. Lots of excellent women participated in the course because the industry had collapsed. Ms. Taiko Kinjo was one of the students in the course. Ms. Kinjo was interviewed together with Ms. Setsuko Yonahara and Ms. Sachiko Nakazato, who used to work under her. Governmental public health nurse? I didn't know anything about governmental public health nurse at first. My sister asked me if I was interested in working at a public health center, which was to be set up soon. So I answered, OK, I will. Then I started to participate in the course. Ms. Taiko Kinja was born in Nago City in Okinawa Prefecture in 1916. During the war, she went back to China to work as a nurse for the army. She got married after she came back to Okinawa. They had one child. Her husband died in Okinawa during the war. She was asked if she was interested in working as a governmental public health nurse while she was working as a nurse at schools and clinics. More education was needed for governmental public health nurses than ordinary nurses, as they had to cover a wide spectrum of duties. In the course, theoretical education and practical training were given to the nurses as well as home visitations. Ms. Kayser told us that dedication was of the utmost importance in being a governmental public health nurse. At the beginning of her lecture, she said, if you do not think you have the commitment needed to serve the people, then please leave the class right now. Ms. Kayser emphasized the point that a governmental public health nurse goes into a community and serves the people in that community. So if the sanitary conditions remain poor in that community, then the governmental public health nurse stationed there is held responsible. This lecture made a lasting impression in my mind. What should we do when we encounter someone who is ill? She told us that we should take care of them until they completely recover. Before the war, nurses were simply aides to doctors with no authority. However, Ms. Waterworth and Ms. Kayser said, as governmental public health nurses, you must take the initiative to act in the interest of the community. Wherever you go, you are the leader in the field of public health. Her speech gave us a feeling of confidence and pride. We were taught 12 principles that were the basis of public health nursing. We had to memorize 12 principles. The first principle stated, before you start working, you have to know what the community's needs are. We went out into the community for the first time after a public health center was set up, so we didn't know anything about the community's needs. 
First, we had to observe what the community's situation was. This is the first of the 12 principles. We felt that we had to initiate the first principle immediately. After completing the course, they then had to go through practical training. Once completed, they could receive a license as a governmental public health nurse, which provided that the performance met the minimal required standards. Between 1950 and 1954, 120 governmental public health nurses were certified. Later, this training course transformed into a nursing school. In 1951, United States Civil Administration of the Ryukyu Islands defined what the title, qualifications, and duties of governmental public health nurses were. Public health nurse in English directly translated into Japanese is Koshu Eisei Kangofu, which what we call here is governmental public health nurse. With the establishment of public health centers, 40 governmental public health nurses were posted at these centers, and the governmental public health nursing system began in Okinawa after the war. Ms. Kinjo became the first head of the governmental public health nurse at the Hokubu Public Health Center. Later, she became the deputy chief of the public health and nursing section of the Health and Welfare Bureau of the Government of Ryukyu Islands and worked hard to improve the health of the people in remote islands and areas, control diseases, and improve the environmental condition as well. Ms. Kayser collected contributions from a women's association of the Shoko Club, the U.S. Military Officers Club, and made uniforms for governmental public health nurses. It was the first uniform of the governmental public health nurse. She said that the uniform must be modern style. I asked why, and then she said that because as you walk around in the uniform, it can be easily recognized by anyone. It will make you feel authentic and will give you confidence as a governmental public health nurse. Thus, we made a good uniform. We painted the box used to visit homes and wrapped it in the cloth similar to the uniform. We put it on the back of a bicycle and visited homes. At the station, there was a record box bigger than the box used to visit homes. A record slip of an individual was confidential and was kept secret. Therefore, governmental public health nurses kept the key to the box so that nobody else can access them. Our work started with these things. Ms. Josephine H. Kayser gathered heads of the governmental public health nurses at a public health center once a week and gave lectures on how to be a head governmental public health nurse. There was a document called Nin Yohyo for the management of governmental public health nurses. All information of a governmental public health nurse was to be kept on the Nin Yohyo. For example, name, date of employment, date of transfer, and so on. When transferring someone, the information on the Nin Yohyo was all that was needed to decide. This also applies to what kind of training that nurse had received before. All the information of a governmental public health nurse is on the Nin Yohyo. Ms. Kayser also taught us some small details in good management like this. It was Ms. Juanita J. Waterworth who created the governmental public health nurse stationing system that started soon after the establishment of the public health centers. This system was created in order for the governmental public health nurses to provide health care to all of the people in the community while living in the same area with the people. This system, which clearly shows unique characteristics of Okinawa, played a major role in providing care to the people in remote islands and areas without doctors. My impression of Miss Waterworth was that she was very strict. On the way to the Ogimi village office with Miss Waterworth, her demeanor was very imposing as usual. Once we arrived, everyone felt intimidated because she was American. She realized how uneasy everyone was with her. She then made everyone feel at ease by observing local customary greeting practices and smiling. 
While I was next to Ms. Waterworth, she bowed to the village mayor. As she spoke with the mayor, she said to him that it would be in the interests of the community to set up a station with a governmental public health nurse at the village office. Then she went on to say that she would like to borrow office space and equipment for them to operate out of. By observing her, I learned the attitude of a person in charge of management. I also thought that Ms. Waterworth was a politician. She had two faces. When she asks for a favor, her face was gentle, but becomes strict when she faces us. I didn't say anything to her, but I learned a lot from this. Ms. Waterworth was a woman with a fighting spirit. She had words with anybody, even if they were senior officials, when the other party was unreasonable. She had a power to move not only the manager of the Public Health and Welfare Department, but also the United States Civil Administration of the Ryukyu Islands. I could not say anything when I was told, Kinjo-san, are you saying that you are not going to do it without even trying by Ms. Waterworth? I studied and experienced enough to anticipate the consequences of what I was about to do. So my idea was that if you end up with getting the same result, it will be a waste of time if I did it. However, she said, remember that you only feel failure after trying to be unsuccessful. This still remains in my mind. I experience lots of hardships in my work, but I came to think that if I do it, I would not regret it later in life, even if it ended in failure. That's what I learned from her. With the shortage of doctors, governmental public health nurses were often required to perform medical acts. However, this caused confusion, as it was unclear as to how far they were allowed to perform medical tasks. Then, Ms. Kayser, directors of public health centers and heads of the governmental public health nurses, discussed and made out working standards of governmental public health nurses. These standards stated clearly that governmental public health nurses were allowed to perform these acts when it was urgent when no directions were given from a doctor and when it was impossible to contact a doctor at a public health center. Thanks to the working standards, we could perform our job a lot easier than before. It was a real pleasure that we could do something for the people. We always felt helpless when we couldn't do anything even though somebody was suffering. Ms. Taiko Kinjo also made efforts to raise the status of governmental public health nurses. In those days, most of the offices of the governmental public health nurses were set up at municipal offices and their work was based there. Although the qualification of governmental public health nurses was acknowledged by the United States Civil Administration of the Ryukyu Islands, the position was not clearly established in the administration of the government of the Ryukyu Islands. One stationed governmental public health nurse told me that she was told, why do we have to allow you to stay here? You are the staff of the government of the Ryukyu Islands by a staff of a municipal office. I was shocked to hear that. Governmental public health nurses were working for the people in the community. So I felt like saying that if they do not need us, why don't I just withdraw the governmental public health nurses from the community? Then I went to the municipal office and said, if you say such things, I'm going to get angry. The section chief told me, Kinjo-san, based on what regulation do you keep governmental public health nurses at municipal offices? Why do we have to allow you to keep a desk and chair in our small office? I could not say anything. I was at a loss because there were no regulations. We were not even sure under whose control we were working. So I made a regulation in 1957. 
Ms. Kinjo defined the title, location, and jurisdiction of the governmental public health nurse stations in the administration of the government of the Ryukyu Islands. Thus, the stationing system was officially established. My role was to coordinate so that a chief of the nursing section and the governmental public health nurses can work without any concerns. My role was not to lead them. The deployment of the governmental public health nurses to remote islands and areas was a headache for the supervisor of the governmental public health nurses. Personnel deployment has to be done in a fair manner. I kept saying this to myself. Governmental public health nurses were like my children, so I did it as fairly as possible. Personnel changes took place every five to six years in mainland Okinawa and two to three years in remote islands. Most of us graduated from a nursing school and public health nursing school on a scholarship. Upon our entrance into the school, we had to promise that they would work in remote islands for the same period as we received the scholarship. Therefore, we accepted working in remote islands as a duty. Working in a remote island was not stressful because we believed that, after one or two years, we would be transferred to the place where we wanted to work. Although working in a remote island was severe, we accepted the deployment believing in that. As a freshman, when we took over the duties, the chief of the nursing section took us to the village mayor and the persons concerned and introduced us to them. It was helpful. It made it easy for us to start working from the following day. We were visited on a regular basis and were given guidance. We were glad. We could feel that we were not abandoned and that we were cherished. I was always looking forward to the monthly meeting. I can go back to the public health center. I can see everybody tomorrow. I want to ask this question. I took notes of all the questions I had during the past one month and attended the meeting with them. Governmental public health nurses told me all the problems they had in their respective communities, but I could not improve them all at once. Okay, I understand. I told them that a similar problem might be happening in other public health centers, so I would discuss the matter at the meeting of the chief of the nursing section. Governmental public health nurses went to a public health center frequently and had discussions freely regarding the problems they had. They also talked about things that they were concerned about. The chief of the nursing section then went to the community to see the problems for themselves and give some advice. That's how they solved the problems. It was also important to secure accommodations where the governmental public health nurses could live with a sense of security. We helped to look for accommodations for a young nurse transferred from mainland Okinawa. We looked for a house with adequate security and where they can live without anxiety. We put importance on the family structure of the landlord. We went frequently to check the house. It was normal. Since the governmental public health nurses in remote islands tended to be alone and unaided, the backup of a supervisor was needed. I often told them, I will keep my promise regarding the period that you are to stay here. I will also protect your position and your health, so you can protect the health of the people. Whenever a problem occurred with the governmental public health nurses, Ms. Kinjo went to solve the problem. Ms. Kinjo often said that if you listen to the people well, things would work out because we are all human beings.
I often told them that if you listen to only one or two people and assume that's what everybody else thinks, then things would not work out. You would make a mistake. You have to listen to the ideas of the people in different positions and then put them together to come up with a solution. The chief of the nursing section in charge of the remote islands called governmental public health nurses, quite often to confirm the situation and the shortages of supplies, listened to the problems they faced. Stationed governmental public health nurses kept attendance books by themselves and submitted the daily, monthly, and annual reports on their activities to public health centers. Activities reported were classified into several categories, such as group and individual guidance, maternal and child health, adult, mental and infectious diseases, hygiene education, health counseling, and paperwork. These were then analyzed in comparison with the needs of the community and evaluated. Their activities, for example, included the visits to the homes where diapers were hung outside and giving guidance on the health and mothers of children. We had a sense that unless we do it, nobody else will support. It became our mission. When we visited houses, we could observe the kitchens and the settings in which they live. Observing these things made us grasp the real situation of the community. Governmental public health nurses expanded their activities, making use of the organizations in the community. In the community, I gathered local residents in the evening through the Women's Association and the area chief to inform them about tuberculosis. Thus, we did our public health activities and solved problems through hygiene education and as to why immunizations were necessary. As a result, the number of people who came for TB examinations increased. In the 1960s, tuberculosis was widespread. One of the major achievements by the governmental public health nurses was in the prevention of tuberculosis. With the initiation of the home visit, Ms. Kinju took initiative in having governmental public health nurses provide guidance on home care to tuberculosis patients. However, home care guidance did not go by the book. We learned that if a TB patient coughs up phlegm, then put it in a piece of paper and burn it. However, it was soon after the war and people were poor and did not have any paper. Our fellow in Nago told us that she used a common leaf of Malvasier in place of paper to put the phlegm in. Each public health nurse had to come up with innovative ideas. For example, we asked, do you have an empty can? And if they said yes, then we told them, then please put your phlegm in this can from now on and bury it. Ms. Kayser taught us to use whatever can be found in the community. If we really wanted to have our patients recovered as soon as possible, then we would be able to easily come up with some good ideas. One day, we visited a TB patient. A governmental public health nurse who went with me said, Kinjo-san, we are working for patients day after day, visiting their homes. But is this going to bring about a beneficial result? I answered, as you say, what we are doing is very little. It's as small as the tip of a needle. However, if we worked hard with our whole heart, helping patients one by one, then in 10, 20, or 100 years, our goals will be achieved. We must work keeping with this in mind. 
In public health, it's not that what we intend to do today can be implemented tomorrow, but in the future, the people will reap the fruits of our labor. After listening to me, the governmental public health nurse agreed and continued her work. To be honest, I was thinking the same thing. Governmental public health nurses also carried out group examination for tuberculosis at schools and municipalities. Around 1965, governmental public health nurses were visiting 90% of the TB patients. They did their job very well. Ms. Kinjo calls Ms. Juanita J. Waterworth as the Nightingale of Okinawa. Ms. Waterworth loved Okinawa. She had a dream of bringing the level of governmental public health nurses in Okinawa up to Western standards with their guidance. In order to make her dream come true, she made a 100% effort. She made an ordinance and had us obtain credentials of the University of the Ryukyus. Observing her, I learned that there were no boundaries between countries in nursing. Even Florence Nightingale started with education. She alone could not nurse. The first thing we have to do is educate the people and make an ordinance for providing education. Next, we're going to take a look at the second period. In 1972, Okinawa reverted back to Japan and became Okinawa Prefecture. At that time, there were 122 governmental public health nurses stationed at municipal offices and 60 at public health centers. In total, there were 182. Now that the law in mainland China applied to all matters related to health sectors in Okinawa, the continuation of the governmental public health nurse station system, which was peculiar to Okinawa Prefecture, was under review. However, since this system has been successful, the governmental public health nurses could continue to work in their same position and workplaces as prefectural public health nurses in the Okinawa Prefecture. After that, prominent diseases changed to lifestyle-related diseases, and aging of the population advanced. Therefore, the Japanese government promoted projects such as health promotion and welfare for the elderly at each municipality. In 1997, in accordance with the enforcement of the Community Health Law, the authority of public health administration was transferred from the prefecture to the municipalities. Along with that, the governmental prefectural public health nurse stationing system that lasted 45 years was abolished, and the role was taken over by municipal public health nurses who worked under local municipalities. Today, we can say that the governmental prefectural public health nurse stationing system was a great system as a means of community health services. Okinawa is facing the era of lifestyle-related diseases now. Municipal governments at present mainly provide the health services in the communities and know-how obtained by the stationing system provided to be useful in the era of lifestyle-related diseases. In the past, the prefectural supported governmental prefectural public health nurses with few restrictions. Setting up that kind of environment was very unique for the administration in Okinawa in those days. Next, we'll look at the third period. Today, the municipal governments are responsible for health care services and they are required to render health support to individuals in the community. Municipal public health nurses are based at municipal public health centers and provide primary health care to deal with lifestyle-related diseases and aging issues in order to meet the diverse needs of the community.
As opposed to that, prefectural public health nurses are based at public health centers and support municipal public health nurses with their special skills. The know-how learned by governmental public health nurses were passed on to prefectural municipal public health nurses at present. One example is in training. The prefectural municipal public health nurses in Okinawa are to receive continuous training even after the completion of their entry-level training so that they can keep improving their knowledge and skills in order to provide better health care services. With this system, their services can be kept at a high standard. We always have to put ourselves in the other's shoes. We have to see things from the people's point of view. I think that was the basis of our activity. That was the way of thinking of governmental public health nurses, and I think this way of thinking was handed down to us. Therefore, I always tried to listen to the people and reflect their opinions in our activities. It is said that it was a dedication of public health nurses that supported governmental public health nurses in the severe health care environment in Okinawa. What was the dedication of public health nurses? I think that dedication of public health nurses is what Ms. Kayser said in the beginning, which was, those who can commit themselves to serving the people can be governmental public health nurses. The awareness that you are working hard for the community, you are a governmental public health nurse. Also, having a sense of mission and a professional spirit, governmental public health nurses had all of these. I worked for the people and they became happy, as did I. The driving force for our work was the influence and education from our senior governmental public health nurses. I think it was good faith. Good faith is composed of having a true heart and having hope of someday seeing the fruits of your labor. When I talked with my students, I often told them, you need knowledge and skills in nursing. You also need dedication. Even if you are knowledgeable and skillful, it would be useless if you do not have the correct frame of mind. What was the key to success of the public health nurse stationing system? I think it was something that society needed. The society in those days needed the system. The attitude of governmental public health nurses that they had to do it first was the most important thing, I think. Also, the support from the family was also important. Because our senior governmental public health nurses won the trust of the people, we were highly recognized by people, and this helped us in our work. The existence of an organization that made our work easy was helpful. The key to success was that we, the supervisors and the governmental public health nurses, all worked together, and also the fairness in personnel changes. But I think I was lucky. Everybody helped me. Ms. Kinjo often came to me and said, what do you think we should do, although I was junior to her. She rarely made decisions by herself. She usually asked for the opinions of everybody else and put them together and brought it to her senior and organizations concerned. Ms. Kinjo always put importance on the organizations concerned. She frequently contacted not only municipal offices, but also organizations such as the Nursing Association and Medical Association. Also, she knew how to manage people. She clearly identified a problem, what role each person should take, come up with a solution, and then put it into action. She sent her staff to training and study sessions, taking into consideration their aptitude. As a result, governmental public health nurses could solve problems by themselves in the community. 
This also nurtured leaders. Ms. Taiko Kinjo worked as a director at Ariake no Sato, a special nursing home for the elderly for five years, from 1977 to 1982 when she retired. She was a good model of the connection between health, medicine, and welfare throughout her life. Her achievements and long-term contribution to the improvement of health care in Okinawa was recognized, and in 1999, she received the Florence Nightingale Medal, which is the most prestigious honor in the world rendered to nurses. A good public health nurse? A good public health nurse is a good woman, a good housewife, and a good human being. Unless you are a good person, you cannot be a good public health nurse. Governmental public health nurses worked to protect the lives of the people in Okinawa with belief, hope, and passion. Their dedication will be passed on to future generations of nurses in Okinawa.